<laughs> yep, we're good. We're on. Okay. Hey, everybody. It's Big Girl Pants Podcast. Yay. Episode 91, April. It's so exciting. It's crazy. it's crazy. I love it. We only have nine more, and then we hit 100, and then we have to have a big party. Yes, so big party. We are here today with Miss Carol Maloney Scott. Thank you so, so much for joining us. She is the CEO of Career Happiness Map Coaching. So, um, April and I are so happy to have this conversation with you just because of what we do for a living. You are yes. like right in our lane. So I think Huge. it's going to be a great dialogue. So everybody stay tuned and learn some things. Yeah. So, so tell us a little know, bit. Okay. Yeah. I want to know, um, what you did before you're doing what you do now mm-hmm. and what, how you got to working for yourself. That's the biggest thing. <laughs> Yeah, because everybody's like, yeah, I want to do that. Right? <laughs> and you're like, yay, it's really hard. <laughs> it is really hard. Yes, it is. I'm not going to, sh- I don't sugarcoat things. So I'm going to tell you the truth. But anyway, thank you, Kimberly and April for having me. I really appreciate it. And um, when they reached out to me, I was like, yes, I love the name of the podcast. So I was like, all in, even just because we do of that. Too. <laughs> I know, I was like, that sounds so fun. How could I not be a part of that? So what did I do before this? So I have about 20 years of experience in talent acquisition. So I was a recruiter. I did training in that space, um, you know, wrote policies and procedures, um, you know, uh, trained hiring managers on interviewing, you know, so I I did a number of different roles within the talent acquisition space. Um, I worked in agency recruiting and then I went into corporate recruiting and that's where I did more of the training and Um, that sort of thing. And I also did career coaching internally at uh, one of the companies I worked for, um, for several years. Um, And that's really kind of, you know, where the whole career coaching thing kind of coincided. Um, I got a master's degree in career development in 2010. um, But at the time, I was a single mother of a teenager. um, And I wasn't in a position to, oh, I'm just going to quit my job. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah that really wasn't happening, but I, you know, I got the degree after I got divorced, uh, because, well, my ex-husband didn't really want me to go back to school or do anything that I wanted to do, but that's another story for another day. Um, oh my God, but, you sound just like me. I know, yeah, right? So I, I was like, uh, ha ha, you all I'm share this story. Now. Right, I was like, I'm gonna do what I want. Big girl, you know, big girl. So yeah. I, so I got my degree, and then, but I, and I really wanted to figure out how to use it, right? So I pitched to my employer, um, you know, that I wanted to do some of this internal co- coaching, you know, even though I was a recruiter and then I moved into this talent acquisition operations role. So I, I worked for someone who was super great and let me do it, you know, so that was great. Um, you know, and then I just kept kind of going through, you know, oh, I'll go work for somebody else. And, you know, I just kept staying in this space, but I, the desire to do this was really burning in the back of my mind. So uh, just a year ago, uh, May, my son, uh, my only child, my son graduated from college and became a fully functioning adult person. <laughs> yay for that. Congrats. Yay. Yay. My original <laughs> career coaching client um, that I hold so up. Oh, true. Of my <laughs> skills because he's done really well. Um, so, you know, so he's, he's launched now, you know, so that was, and, and I remarried five years ago. Okay. So I really, um, you know, it just kind of was the perfect storm for, you know, what, it's time for me to just take a chance and go out and do this on my own, you know, and my husband was very supportive. My current husband was very supportive of it. And he said, no, I think this is what you need to do. So yeah. So last, uh, August I quit my job. So it's wow. been almost a year now. Um, wow. So impressive. I love it. And especially with you like your big girl and pants on. Yeah. You say? Well, you know, yeah, I put my big girl pants on, but you know what? The big girl pants didn't know COVID was coming. So right. you know, I'm yeah. glad, uh, but I'm glad I didn't. I'm Thanks. really, really glad I didn't because I think a, you know, maybe, I don't know, maybe my husband wouldn't have been, at support. <laughs> I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> you know, and uh, you know, the risk factor of that. And I, and I also think, you know, of course, you know, when you know something like that is coming, you know, are you going to want to put yourself out there? I don't know. I don't know. No. I honestly don't know what I would have done. It's hard right. to say, you know, in hindsight, uh, but I'm so glad that I did because right now, um, you know, during this time, there are so, as obviously you both know, there are so many people and, you know, I, I work with women, but so many women who are just dying for guidance around what to do about their careers right now, whether they are underemployed, unemployed, you know, laid off, furloughed, unhappily employed, you know, it's interesting because I think there's some people who, um, 
even though they are employed, so they haven't lost their job. I think this whole situation right now is just making a lot of people like reevaluate their lives, period. Yeah. It's like a, taking a pause and thinking yep. like, how do I want to live my life, period? So I think there's a lot of people who are just realizing, you know what? I didn't lose my job but it kind of sucks and I don't like it anyway. (laughs) So I also want to figure out what else I can do. You know, and there are a lot of people even in COVID that really do want to start businesses, you know? And so there's just so many people that need this help. So I just really feel very grateful, honestly, that I didn't know because I think what I'm doing is really needed. And I really feel good about being able to help you know, those people right now. That's good. Yeah. I mean, I think I like it's it, it, literally the whole, every time, every word that came out of your mouth, I was just like, yes, pray. <laughs> Cause it's like, of course we didn't know this was coming, but what a beautiful, like, it's it, like a hidden gem. This whole thing was right. Because so many people are like, wow, you know, I got to spend more time with my family. I got a pause. Right. Like mm-hmm. I got to really reevaluate and think about whether or not I'm happy in my career. And if I'm not, what do I really want to be doing? Like what else? And you, and we had nothing but time for the past, you know, three, four months to think about it and to reevaluate. That would be great for you, Uh, you know, because so many people need that type of guidance. Well, you know, I was just talking to someone last week about um, how 2021 is going to be remembered, you know, 10 years from now, not from 2022, but like 10 years from now. And is it going to be, the negative um, situation that we think, I don't know. I think it might actually be remembered as a time of reconnection and a, and a time for families to learn how to be together again and mm-hmm. learn how to sit at the table and eat dinner as a family and slow down and appreciate each other. Also a year where tough conversations were started. And mm-hmm. while it might not have been a conversation that a lot of people wanted to have, it's certainly a conversation that needed to be had. Mm-hmm. And so I think, that we're going to be able to remember this year in a better light than what we think right now. I agree. Yeah. COVID aside, COVID aside, right? It's right. just what COVID gave us. So yes. it's sort of the little nuggets that we were given through something tragic. And really to highlight like what is actually important, you know, because it's like yeah. you said, people who are, you know, either out of work or they're furloughed or whatever, even if they have a return date, it's like, wow, was I really happy at that job? Or was I just right. trying to keep up with, you know, my day to day, my schedule my life my bills etc but now I have this time to just think about and and I mean another thing that a lot of people are talking about is the amount of money that people are getting on unemployment right now Uh (laughs) so it's like they're able to survive and they're thriving because I don't care who you are I mean I know that some people have extravagant lifestyles and they live maybe you know have large means to keep up with but like a thousand dollars a week not doing anything being at home like that'll give you you're not worried about whether where your next meal is coming from right, and you're right. able it's to say like yeah yeah and you're better. able to say like yeah. am i really happy in this job yeah right i have one one on one client who actually has two small children and i had started working with her like literally right before the lockdown hit like we had signed up to work together and she she is employed and she was looking for career change And as soon as COVID hit, I think it was like literally like our second session, she was freaking out. And she said, I can't even talk about my career stuff yet because I don't even know what to do because I'm sitting at my dining room table working with two little girls running around the table, hitting each other, you know, and I don't know what to do. And my husband's upstairs locked in his office and he's not helping me and you know, whatever. (laughs) And so I said, okay, so literally we had a session where I put like my mom hat back on and you know my mom hat for three and six year olds is pretty dusty you know but I I, my son is 25 you know so but I I I took out my mom hat and I said okay let's just have a session where we strategize like about your like life right now you know and that's what we did and really we talked about just like how to what she needed to do, like both at home and with her job and with her husband, you know, to I manage. I was going to say, it. I really hope her husband was part of that freaking strategy because I'd be knocking on his door and say, listen, buddy, I got a job too. So you got the morning, I got the afternoons. Get your butt out of the office. I'm going in. <laughs> I know. I have to be careful. It's that's funny that you say that, Kimberly, because I have to be careful because I'm, I'm a little bit... Um, forceful sometimes and I have to be careful with my clients like how much I say things about their husbands 
talk about that. <laughs> you know, sometimes I want to say, um, you know what? I think your husband needs to go. You know, that's what I'm thinking to myself. Okay. You know, but you know, he needs a little reality check that this is yeah. actually a partnership. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I try to very, um, you know, politely and and tread lightly um, around some of those things. Obviously, I don't ever say to anyone, you know, is your husband supportive or whatever. But they tell me that often, you know. And it's interesting because you know, really, the clients who do better with the work really are the ones that have supportive, you know, home environment. Of course. Right. Um, yeah. And it's hard because, you know, I can't, I can't affect that change. And I'm also not a therapist. So if somebody starts telling me all about their marriage, you know, I will. Like, uh, uh, like, hey, that's outside my bounds. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Like you need to work on that, you know, separate, but I do tell them though, they need to work on that because in order to be a good candidate for career coaching and to do that type of work and to really make any headway on it. Right you know, your personal life really needs to be in a pretty decent state of stability. And that is challenging right now because how many people really are in a place of stability right now? I mean, the people who are single are, you know, and don't have any, anybody at home with them are suffering from a standpoint of, you know, loneliness. lonely isolation. Yeah. And yeah. I, yeah. I worry about my son with that. You know, I mean, he lives in Chicago in a studio apartment by himself and he's been there, you know, for what, a hundred, I don't even know how many days he has counted as if he was in prison. It's terrible. <laughs> but, um, you know, but, it, you know, so I worry about that, you know, but then there's also the people who are, yeah, are home with like a whole bunch of kids or, you know, their spouses or roommates or whoever, you know, are home and they're not used to that. Um, I'm not used to my husband being home every day working. You know, I mean that I, I'm used to working from home. I worked from home for 10 years of my corporate career before I quit my job. So I'm used to daytime weekdays. The house is mine. Yeah, that, yeah. that is, I think that was a huge challenge. My husband works from home, has for 14 years. Wow. And when that first shelter in process, when we all moved home, he was like, oh my gosh, this is so great. You're going to be here. Nobody can come over. You can't go anywhere. This is great. One week later, maybe two weeks later, he's like, and when do you go back to work? <laughs> like, he was so <laughs> and over we're done it. With I'm it. Like, Remember, you were really happy about this, like just a week ago. <laughs> he's like, I changed my mind. I'm allowed it's to change so my funny. mind. I have one client in my membership community. She's hilarious. I love this woman. She's like, she said, I think I'm going to have to get an apartment. <laughs> and I was like, oh, that's bad. She's like, yeah. no, 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 I don't want to get a divorce. She's like, I just need to get an apartment, meaning she needs an apartment, like, so that can be her co working space. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, or her, her, her cafe to work in or her whatever, you know, her escape, because she has like two teenagers that are home and, and her husband working from home, you know, and she's, and she's not working and she's trying to figure her stuff out. And it's just so funny because, yeah, she's just, like so over it and I just I don't know we just laugh about that so many times on like my group coaching calls we just like laugh about like the husbands I, I love it and they're all recorded but you know the husbands are never going to get into that membership community to see those recordings so I'm not worried <laughs> there you go. just say I'm like whatever happens in those calls right what stays. happens in those calls stays in those calls <laughs> right by design. So I have a question for you, Carol, and somebody comes to you, because I get this a lot, and, and it's such a challenging thing to address. Somebody comes to you in, let's say, midlife, 45 to 50, and they just, um, they're just not happy in their career anymore. They want to make a transition, but let's be real. That's not easy to do. Right. Uh, you know, I'm 45, well, be 45 in a couple of months. It's not easy to do at this, you know, time in your life. What's some advice that you give people? Well, part of the reason that I called my business Career Happiness Math Coaching was really to address that very issue because, you know, I, I just turned 52 um, last week and, you know, I, most of the clients that I have really initially, especially my one-on-one -on -one clients are older, you know, I mean, I really have attracted a lot of women in that age range, you know, yeah. in forties, fifties, like looking to reinvent themselves. And, um, you know, so, so the math really means is that it's a step-by-step -step process, right? So no, it's not easy to do. And I think the reason that so many people get frustrated with career change mm -hmm. is because they want to literally, you know, blink their eyes, like I dream of Jeannie, and, you know, become whatever it is they want to become, right? They just want to go from the job they don't like to the new career that they want in one with, step. With the same yeah. compensation. With the same I, yeah. Right. This is what I run into <laughs> exactly. with people all the time. And they're, they, you know, we're in staffing, right? So they'll call and they'll say, right. well, 
I've been in X, you know, lane right. for the last 25 years and, you know, I'm at 80K and, but this is what I really want to do. And here's how I think my skills will plug into that. And I'm looking for, you know, I'm willing to go down to 75. <laughs> I'm like, hmm. Right. It's not no, that easy. Not it's not that right. Easy. Right. Right. So some of it really is a reality check. So I always use this analogy. I always say that, okay, so you know, the movies where like there's, a, and I think, I think in one of the Indiana Jones movies, maybe I'm really dating myself now, but I don't know what it was. So it's okay. I think <laughs> hey, I loved those movies. But you know the movies where like there's like a mountain and a mountain and like a big cavern and there's like a wiggly bridge that goes oh, across sure. it and maybe yeah. the bridge is out, but the person is a, a dragon comes along and brings them over to the other side or they're a superhero and they can jump to the other side, whatever, right? Or they're not and they fall in the cavern and they die and get eaten by the whatevers, right? Well, that was a tragic ending I didn't expect okay well that's what happens when you think you can take that one you die yeah yeah right 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 so so you're not a superhero and you don't have a dragon you have to have you have to have that bridge so the bridge really is the map the path right so you need to build a path and you have to have some patience you have to have a plan and you have to do the work around it it's not going to happen overnight you know so I take people through a a process where first we identify, you know, the clues to what it is that you really want to do and then run it through the lens of clarity and really come up with, you know, what is a reasonable target, right? What is a reasonable target and what is a reasonable first target? Because the first target, you can move in the direction of where you want to go, right? But you can't necessarily, you know, take that big leap. So if you're in an, you know, I don't know. So if you're in a job, um, a field that you don't like, but, you know, maybe you're in an industry that you, you do like, you know, maybe you go, um, you know, and try to figure out how to gain the skills, you know, you go back to school, you get a certification, um, you know, you realize that initially, maybe you might need to make less money, you know, or maybe you want to break into a, a certain industry, and you don't really have the skills to do that in the job you really want. Like right now, I have a client who does a lot of administrative work. And um, she has a degree in environmental science, right? And she really wants to get into, like, she wants to work, you know, at like a zoo or an aquarium or, you know, huh. in that, yeah, it's fun. But first of all, you know, A, those things, you know, COVID, so there's that. But but I, I, I keep telling her, like, you're not going to earn the same salary that you're earning right, right now in this administrative capacity if you start over in that type of thing. So what you really need to do is think about, why don't you try to get an administrative job in one of those types of organizations? Right. Because you're, you're, you're leveraging what you already have and know yep. to get the salary you want, prove yourself. And then, you know, maybe then you can use your degree to segue into, you know, something that you want, that you really want to do, you know, in that environment, um, cause you're breaking into that environment in a place where, um, you know, you really, you really, uh, can leverage your background, you know, to earn the salary that you want to earn, you know, you're putting yourself where you want to be, not necessarily, though, immediately doing what you want. I think the problem is, though, is a lot of us have this instant gratification thing, right? We really just want to do it immediately. Um, and we also don't want to do the work because I cannot tell you right now how many people and I just want to like, hold their hand and say, I know it's terrible. I'm like, you want to pet them and say, well, I want to do See, I'm like, I'm like super nurturing mom-ish yeah. person, but I'm also a tough love person. You could ask my son this. I will tell you, I'm really sorry, honey. That's so sad. Now stop whining and go do what I told you <laughs> because honestly, you're not going to, you know, whining isn't getting you anywhere, you know? So I talk to all these women now they are like, I cannot find a job anywhere. You know, I'll never find a job right now. And then I ask them, what have you done so far? to find this job. I looked at Indeed one day. <laughs> I talked to a one person, you know, or I applied for five jobs and no one called me back or, you know, right. and it's like, you know, you have to ratchet that plan right. up. I mean, you have to work at this like it is your job and you have to, there's so much that you need to be doing. Like if you're doing the so much and then it's still not working, okay, then maybe come to me and say, there's yeah. no jobs. Because honestly, right now, people are getting jobs. They I mean, are. Yeah, we're in staffing. We know that people are yeah. hiring. 
I mean, my clients are getting jobs. My people in my membership community are getting jobs. People in my free Facebook group are getting jobs. People that I'm reaching out to on LinkedIn to talk to them as, you know, prospective clients are telling me, oh, I just got a job. You know, I have a tremendous amount of LinkedIn contacts. And so, you know, you get those little alerts every day, like, congratulate so-and-so on, you know, their new position or whatever. Yeah, right. A lot of those, there are jobs, but yes, it's competitive. And yes, you have to position yourself well. But I always tell people, you know, Yes, maybe it is more competitive right now, but you know what? The for the best jobs and the job with your name on it, it's always competitive. It's always I was just gonna say that that was gonna be my follow up is you know even in a really hot market that we just walked out of in March, yeah. it's still it so good <laughs> for, for the good jobs, the ones that everybody's vying for. It's still incredibly competitive. Yeah. Right. I was also going to say, when you were talking, you reminded me of something. It's either Forbes magazine or Harvard Business Review. Just most recently, I uh, had a, either a white paper or an article. I can't remember. We're talking about all of these individuals that were quote unquote furloughed. Um, mm -hmm. there, there is not a lot of intention. Uh, it was a high percentage. I want to say like 40%. Those jobs will come back. Mm -hmm. People won't. And they're going to yeah, this right. way to upgrade their talent. Um, and, and find new people um, to yeah. take roles that. Well, yes. And you know what's funny about that? So, the woman that I just told you about before with the two little kids running around the table, yeah. you know what she decided to do? Oh, please mm -hmm. tell me. Quit her job. Oh, because wow. she realized that she realized that she was enjoying being home with the girls so much and that her husband makes more than enough money and she wasn't really liking her job anyway. And she said, you know what? I really don't think I want to do this type of job anymore. She's like, I really think I want to think about like what I can do for my own business. Maybe I want to go work in a nonprofit, it's maybe, I, you know, and, and just get off the hamster wheel of thinking she needed to have, you know, the most, you know, the highest paying job she could have and, you know, all of that. And I think, you know, because her children are so little and they do need her so much you know, she realized her return on investment wasn't there because she said, if I'm not loving my job, and then it's not, many, but, right. Then it's not worth it. It's not worth it. And there are many working mothers who really love what they do and they're very passionate about it and, and, and they're really into it. And yeah, so then it does make sense to do that and to, to, to spend, you know, not spend that time with that with your children and that because it, it enhances your life, right? It makes your life better and therefore it makes yeah. you a better mother. Exactly. Right. But it doesn't make you a better mother if you're miserable, stressed and stressed out all the time. Mm -hmm. So really, really one of the questions I asked her really finally was, is your salary necessary for the family right now? You know, and she said, you know, she's like, my husband keeps saying, you know, why don't you just quit? And I said, well, but why aren't you? And really she couldn't come up with a good reason other than, I don't know, she didn't like quitting things or, you know, she's afraid if she quits something bad's going to happen. I don't know. You know, we've just been taught, like, I think uh, so many of us have been brought up to just think like, well, you don't just quit a perfectly good job. You know, who are you to right. quit a perfectly good job? Well, I say you are somebody who is empowered to do what's best for you. Right. Yeah. Well, you know, that's who you are. This is also potentially an opening for her to go and do something. Yes. She wants right. to be home with her kids right now and that's fine. But if she is this high powered person and this super motivated individual, at some point she's going to say, yeah, but I want more. And this right. is give her the platform yeah. the leverage and the flexibility to go do whatever that is. And, and the time to think about what that is when we're working, we don't have time. I mean, you did it, right. but you know, right. we have time to really process that and, and take the leap. Plus, how awesome she, is it that she, yeah, I mean, how awesome is it that she yeah. has the flexibility to stay home with her kids for exactly. however long, you know, not everybody has exactly. that option. Exactly. So many people hate their jobs, hate their lives and wish that they could stay home with their kids and she has the ability to do it. So, no, I, and right. worry less about what other people think. So right. Right. I was, you know, 10, well, 13 years ago, I was in a really bad situation. I was in accounting and finance. I hated it. I should have never been there. Brad, my husband said, you need to quit. My hair was falling out. I had hives. It was horrible. Wow. It was a job I shouldn't have. I mean, it just wasn't suited for me. And mm -hmm. he said, you need to just quit. The kids are, you know, in, I think like early middle school, something like that. And he's like, you've always wanted to spend more time with them. Why don't you just quit and do that? And I thought, yeah, that's exactly what I need to do. I'm going to be with my kids all the time. 
Two weeks, two weeks. <laughs> I was yeah. back on the job boards, and that's when I did make a career transition and, and get into staffing. But yeah, I, it just wasn't two for weeks. me. Uh, two weeks, yeah. I was like, I need out of here. <laughs> I'm gonna go. Crazy. Yeah, I mean, I wor I've worked since my son was seven weeks old, so yeah. I I have always worked. So I'm certainly, you know, not saying that I'm not a proponent of working mothers, but I'm I'm a proponent of people doing what they want to do. Yeah, doing what yep. they want to do, doing what fills them up and not what they think society wants them to do, not what they think is expected of them. Um, Life is yeah. too damn short. Well, right. which it's so, it's so prevalent too. And it's like every day, it's just too yeah. short. Yeah. Yeah. Life is too short and it's so prevalent. Like as women, we're not given the same, I don't want to say autonomy, but we're not given the same respect when it comes to you know, whether we want to feel the way in which we, which we wish to be fulfilled. Like, right. it's not like we get, someone will look at a woman and say, oh, wow, look at her. She's working a job. She's parenting. She's got her hobbies. She's doing this. Like it's all with women. We always have to choose. Like yeah. you either, are you just, are mm -hmm. you going to be a mother? Are you going to be a career woman? Are you going to take care of your health and fitness? Mm -hmm. No, I'm going to do all of it. Like I'm going to do all of it and no one's going to question what I'm doing. <laughs> Right. I mean, you need to prioritize your own stuff. Yeah. You need to prioritize what's important. And I think, you know, like for this person right now, I mean, you know, obviously daycare isn't available where she's living. So, yeah. I mean, no one can take care of her children right now, you know, so it's just, it's just not working. And honestly, you know, she signed up for one-on-one -on -one coaching and when do you think she had time to do any of the things that I was assigning her to do? Like any of her homework? She like did. She was, she, yeah. She was worried like that her six year old's not gonna learn how to read properly because she doesn't have time for homeschooling. And I'm like, okay, take a breath. I yeah. guarantee she's gonna learn how to read. Just like, let's relax. Like it's, oh, it's gonna be okay, you know? Yeah. And um, yeah, it's just, it's, and it's hard. It really is truly hard for people in, in, any, in any life situation right yeah. now. Um, and I think I, everybody- I think so, moms take the cake right now. Working, oh, yeah, working yeah. mothers in my opinion right now, are the ones taking the brunt, whether they're single, I agree. they're married. I really believe working moms are taking the, the brunt of it because I'm not in that situation anymore, but like April and people that I know very well, it has been a real challenge to give their employers exactly what they're expecting and what they hired them to do. Yeah. Give yeah. Their children, you know, the quarter, the education that they're supposed to be getting, but and the attention you know, that they need. Yeah. Well, you know, April didn't sign up to be a second grade teacher, but guess what right. she to be this year. So <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how yeah. anyone is doing that. I don't yeah. know how anyone is doing that because I always think to myself, you know, because it's just my husband and I, my stepdaughter is in, is 21 and she's at college. Well, she's home now for the summer with her mom, but you know, so she's at college and you know, my son lives in Chicago and it's just me and the little wiener dogs here and they're, they're adorable, but they even drive me crazy. But, you know, it, I don't know how people are doing it because sometimes when I'm working, I think to myself, how in the hell would I be taking care of kids right now? And how could I possibly be homeschooling somebody? I think the same thing. Uh, while trying to do any, it's, it's really almost, it's impossible. You know? I and, don't and have never taken Xanax, but I will tell you, if I oh, yeah, had yeah. That situation, I would have a prescription for survival. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I don't know how people no, are doing it. I don't know how people are doing it. And I think that they're not doing it in a lot of cases. I think they're very imperfectly doing it. Right. And the other thing that's really bad too, is that, you know, those who are more affluent, you know, they can hire somebody to tutor their kids via Zoom, right? I mean, there's plenty of teachers, I'm sure, that are doing that, you know, that are, that are helping, you know, with homeschooling or, you know, they can find other ways to get help with things, right? Um, but, you know, if you don't have as much money or if you are a single mother, you know, parent and you don't have, you know, anybody supporting you or you have an unsupportive spouse or whatever, um, yeah, I don't know how they're doing it, but. Well, and you know, it's interesting being in staffing and April can speak to this. The jobs that are coming back, um, a lot of them under, let's say $20 an hour, which really is not a lot to support a family are the ones that are going back to the office. Like they're required yeah. to be in the office. And I'm like, man, those are the people that need a little extra flexibility because they right. don't have the money to pay a sitter where their kids used to be in school or they don't have the extra right. funds to do the things that they need to do while these other families that have right. are 
you know, more income or whatever, they're both working at home and hiring people to come in and help. Right, so, right, exactly. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So there really is a lot of disparity in that. And honestly, I mean, that was one of the reasons. Um, so I really made a bit of a pivot in my business, you know, because I was really focusing more on one on one, you know, high end one on one coaching right. uh, before the pandemic hit. And then in March, you know, I think like all of us, you know, I had a little bit of a, whoa, what am I going to do? This is a disaster. Holy crap. You know, I, I went through all that for about two weeks and I was freaking out. And then I reined it in and I said, okay, I got to figure out what I'm going to do. Because honestly, I just didn't feel like asking people to pay, you know, premium prices to sign up for, you know, three month one-on-one -on -one coaching was something that I felt good about emotionally, sure. knowing, you know, how much panic there was and how much stress there was. And I really thought about, yeah, like, how can I help, how can I help the most women and not just the top tier women, you know, because I was working with a coach that was really trying to get me to, you know, charge more money and work with more affluent people and work with higher level people. And, you know, that's all good and well, and sure, those people are great and they deserve help and, you know, whatever. That's a good, you know, there's nothing wrong with those people. But you know what, there's this massive amount of people that fall into what Kimberly just said, right? As far as what right. you guys are experiencing with your, you know, your staffing and the people that are coming to you as job candidates, right? And even, even people that earn a lot more money than that, let's face it, still yeah. have lifestyles to support and think, you know, I mean, you can earn a lot more money than that and still not be a wealthy person, right? Right. Um, in today's society. Um, so I really was trying to figure out what can I do? So that's why I started Career Happiness Studio, which is my membership community that, that I'm now doing. Um, and the purpose of that was just to be able to get as many women as possible into something where they can get a lot of help at a very nominal cost you know, low stress, low, you know, so monthly for the cost of, you know, a tank of gas, you can get the help that you need. Um, because I just feel like there's a lot of value in just being able to, um, I can teach a lot of people the same thing. Mm -hmm. you know, I love and, that. I, that, that is speaking my language, speaking to my heart. You know, when I first got my certification, initially thinking I was going to work with executives, but what I know about myself, that's not, that's not the space that I love. I love helping the people who don't know what they don't know. Right. So, mm -hmm. and I think that's why the whole, for me, the coaching thing while being in staffing and, and, and in a day-to-day -day situation where I actually can still help people, I think right. that's where I had a little bit of a disconnect for myself and where I was like, I actually want to spend my time working with these people who just walk right through our doors or now, um, you know, email. Zoom call us. <laughs> Zoom. Yeah, it is though. It's Zoom and phone calls and things like that. But that's right. my mission is people who don't know what they don't know, you right. really can impact their lives in such a big way. I mean, just little things by teaching them how to tell their career story or how yeah. to write their resume. Just little. Oh yeah. They don't know how, how to do that. Interview. I mean, little things that seem like little things to us that literally can change the trajectory of their life because they're things they did not know. And that is my mission. So I love that you're doing that kind of thing. What would like, who are, who's your demographic? I know it's women. You kind of just spoke to it, but like, we obviously want you to talk about how people find you and how they can get sure. help, but who, who needs you? If you could sum it up. Sure. Um, you know, who needs me is really anybody, any woman at any stage in her career that feels confused, stuck, lost, frust you know, frustrated, just in a place where they know they, they know they need help, but they don't really know what they need. Yeah. That they know they need it, you know, and, and another population within, you know, so originally I thought, oh, I really need, you know, because we all know, and everybody watching this all, anybody who's started a business all knows, we're all told, be very specific in your niche, be very specific in your niche, <laughs> you know, and that was the other thing I was trying to do, you know, and I said, you know what, I don't really like that either, because yeah. I feel like my niche You're is, people out. Yeah. well, my niche really is women who don't know what the hell they're doing when it comes to their career. That's really my niche. Right. And can that woman be a 60 year old woman who is thinking about what she wants to do 
in retirement. Yes. Can that be a 45 year old mother with kids in high school who's married and, you know, has been doing something for 20 years and now hates it and wants to do something else, but doesn't know what to do. Yes. Well, has even been at home for 20 years and now wants right, to Right. Right. Exactly. Yeah. There's the women who, yes. And I have some of those in my membership community too. You know, so we have a visitor. We have a visitor. Um, this is you know, Chloe. So there's, there's those people, but then there's another population that I never really considered serving. And I don't know why, because I, if anything, I just love the young population because right. I guess I have young adults, you know, in my life with the kids, but the recent grads, I mean, shout out to the young ladies who just got their degree Man, in this nightmare of a situation. No celebration, no ceremony, no, celebration, no, nothing. no ceremony. Yep. No, no fun. Yeah. And in addition to no fun, the way more no bigger problem is, you know, they feel like there's no jobs for them and right. they, and yeah. they're very afraid because they're, they're looking at the statistics and they're saying to themselves, well, I'm just coming out of college and there's all these professional women who are unemployed, right. Who have, you know, tons of experience that I don't have. Why would anybody hire me? You know, and they truly, truly are feeling really lost. Like this week um, coming up in, I do every Wednesday in my free Facebook group, which is called the um, Smart Chicks Career Club. Um, I do a, uh, a weekly show called Career Chat Live. And this week I'm going to talk about, um, you know, strategies for the new grads in the pandemic and like how, and, you know, invite them to come together. And I've been inviting more and more of them to my group um, because I really think that they need to know that they need to still double down on the core strategies and yeah. not give into the fear and, you know, the, and just give up, you know, don't give up before you've started, you know, and I think a lot of them have, they're really scared. I have a little plug. Um, we have a friend, Julian Placino, he's been on our podcast. He has a podcast, um, Pathways to Success. Is that it, April? Yep. Um, but for your um, for young people who are graduating right now, I encourage you to just give them that name, Julian Placino, Google. Okay. This guy graduated in uh, 2008. And so when he came out of college, he was in the exact same situation. Uh -huh. and he tells his story so eloquently and so beautifully. He's, and so now he's he's got an amazing brand, um, very well known in the Dallas area, but I, I would I would venture to say probably how many, outside. how many interviews did he go on? 28? Uh, 30? So many. And he really was starting to question his value and like, do I even yeah. have anything to offer the world? You know, where am I going to plug in? I don't even know, but he tells the story so beautifully and mm -hmm. how, just how to stay centered through that because it really yeah. messes with you a little bit and it makes you question everything, your entire existence. Yeah. And what am I yeah. going to do for the rest of forever? Mm -hmm. So he just puts perspective around forever and how it's really not forever and it just right. feels like it. But so I think he even gives some tactical things that you can do um, as a new grad to just um, stick with it. But I would seriously um, connect them virtually, obviously, with him just because I think it helps people to know, hey, I'm not alone, even though we all know we're not alone. Um, but then you get to see. Absolutely, yeah. This guy went through exactly what I'm going through and look where he is just 12 years later. So, and like, right. there's so many people, they feel like there's shame associated with yes. job surfing. Yes. And like, yes. that's what, that's what I try to, to break with people too. Pe even just people that are, you know, furloughed or laid off or, you know, in the job market or whatever, tell literally everyone, everyone. you know. Do yes. Not, yes. Do hey, I'm looking secret. for a job. Yes. Yes. You no. Know, no. Talk to everybody. Make Everyone. sure that they know that you're looking. Your family, even because yep. the majority of new opportunities, especially those that are coming where you're transitioning into something new, is going to come from somebody you know. Absolutely. Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. And another thing I, I teach around that too is that how important it is that when you are looking for a job and you're in that, you know, that networking with everybody mindset, which is a superly, super great mindset to be in. But you have to remember that when you're looking for a job, every conversation that you have is treated like an interview. What, and what I mean by that is, you know, if you're at the soccer field and, you know, you're talking to, you know, another parent, don't bitch and complain yeah. about your current job or don't say yes. how, you know, everything sucks and we're all going to die, you know, be positive, be yeah. positive, 
because you never know what that person and who that person knows, right? And and it's so that's I think it's just really important to remember that you always want to put your best foot forward in any conversation about jobs and careers. I mean, you could even just, you know, go to your, you, when you go to your nail technician or your hairdresser or right. your doctor or your dentist, whoever, right? I mean, yep. you, you know, your dental hygienist might have a husband or wife that works at the company you want to work at, you know? Right. And so you, you really want to always make sure that you are being super positive around any job search discussions and that, yes, that you don't discount anybody as a potential source of a lead or information, you know, yeah. that might be able to uh, really help you, you and know, because you just really to, don't know. That goes back to a conversation and Carol, you and I were having before we actually went live, or I think even before April joined us about social media, you know, yeah. social media right now is a, is a beautiful social justice platform for people to share their thoughts, their belief systems, kind of how they feel. I think it's a wonderful therapeutic platform for a lot of people, but I do caution, just remember that, you know, you don't want to come across as negative. Like it's right. one thing to be thought sharing and it's one thing to, to, to enlighten somebody with a, like a new idea or whatever, or to even say, this is great. I'm so excited about this but make sure that it has a positive spin. Right, I mean, right. Don't use the platform. I'm just saying, don't be that negative person right. bashing whatever side because right. you just don't know who's looking and how that's going to impact you later. Right. Yes. Like intelligent discourse is good, but cursing people exactly. on Facebook is bad. Exactly. <laughs> the stuff that I, and not even just Facebook, but the stuff that I have seen on LinkedIn blows my mind. Yes. Like, the fact I'm that so people are willing that, oh, the yes. fact that people are willing to be so like candid, and I mean like complete. There is yeah, nothing yes, politically yes. correct yes. about the things that they're saying. Yeah. I'm just like, oh my god! Everybody yes. starts sending me like, stuff, April, because I never see it. You have to start. Oh, no, I see some really bad stuff. So I'm like, bad. Now, and I, I really just want to say to these people, I'm um, hey guess what? You're never getting a job because you were insane. <laughs> even if they, rain so even, it in. Yeah. Yeah. The biggest thing that I've seen too, is that it's not even people that might, because everybody's going to be in the job search one day, right? Oh. Even if yes, you own right, a right. multi-million dollar company, you know, even if you, especially if you own a multi-million dollar company, hello, Elon Musk, when he went on Joe Rogan, like every, he compromised his, you know, billion dollar company and the shares for his company right, by like right. making a risky decision. Well, these people, they don't understand that their clients are going to see this stuff on their professional social media and then right. be like, well, why would I want to work with that person if this is how he truly feels? Like right. people are blowing my mind. So there's one girl, her name's Madison, the blue haired recruiter. I don't know if you follow her, see her no. post. I've followed her. The and go by Madison, the blue haired recruiter. Or Yeah, so if you type that in LinkedIn, you'll find it. Okay, okay. Um, oh. But yeah, Madison, the blue haired recruiter, she posted something, you know, of course, it was centered around social justice warriors or something. And I mean, this CEO just went off. And I'm assuming, because of course I had to go down the rabbit hole, Excuse me, but I'm assuming that he owns his own company because it's a CEO of blah, blah, blah. Uh -huh. I mean, the true feelings from deep down within his soul were on this LinkedIn thread. And I was just like, this is the stuff that we do not need to be doing. Like, even right. if you feel that way. Right. You need up. to have self-control. You need to have self-control and use, yeah. and use your judgment. Yeah. Yeah. And, and that's always the case. And like you said, just because you're not currently looking for a job, that doesn't mean that someday you're not going to be, or even currently just doing your current job. You know, yeah. you're a person who's out there. You know, the oh bottom my gosh, line people is, can get fired of over anything. Exactly. Right and the bottom like, line is we're all out there right now. You right. can only not be out there to so much of a degree. You know, there are still some people that are trying to hide from the internet, but you really can't do that and be relevant <laughs> yeah, in 2020. Yeah. But yeah, I agree. So yeah, the LinkedIn profile thing is very important. Um, and it's, and it's amazing to me how many job seekers have just, and I'm sure you guys see this every day because you're doing all the recruiting on LinkedIn, but how many job seekers just don't update their LinkedIn profile? Like they just don't. Close like, my I mind. have that conversation all the time. Close my mind. And like the whole shadow man thing. Well, I just don't want anyone to see me. And I'm like, no. Okay. <laughs> all right. I mean, the, here's, and I tell people all the time, 
and this is wonderful information for everybody listening, as a recruiter, there is a back office uh, recruiting platform that allows you to see all of the um, profiles that you know a, a typical user maybe would not be able to see. And right. when we run a search, it's gonna pop up all of the different profiles. And listen, right or wrong, good, bad, or indifferent, we scroll through and the ones with the picture get called first. And oh yeah, not, if you don't have a picture, you're finished, right? It, That's it's not, you know, I've had someone accuse um, recruiters of discrimination. I'm like, no, it's just because you're a real person. It's like, right, you see right. a happy face there. You want to pick up right. one and call that person or you want to reach out. If it's a shadow, it's like, well, they're not real. <laughs> we keep scrolling. Keep yeah, scrolling. no, it's, it's a real exactly. Person. Right, it's, yeah. it's, it's, yes, the picture thing. And, and then also, what is your picture? I saw a woman the other day that posted herself in her wedding gown on LinkedIn. Oh, oh. yeah, all the time. I saw okay. someone yesterday with their two little children's heads right yes. here, yes. <laughs> right here. And I'm like, it's LinkedIn and we're proud it's that you're not proud. Facebook. Yeah, we're yes. proud. Yeah, it's not Facebook. Not it's not Facebook. It's not the place, right? right. Which is so see funny your because face. That's yeah. it. everything, everything that we've talked about on this episode, it just blows my mind that this is not common knowledge. Like <laughs> common knowledge. <laughs> well, it's or not, even though. taught. Yeah. But even not even not taught in high school, not right. taught in college. Right. It's not taught None anywhere. Of it. Why is this None of not it. taught in high school? Right. It's so much more important than freaking physics, unless you want to do something unless you want to be that has nothing yes. to do with physics. And if so. you saw my grade in physics, you would know that it was not worthwhile for me to take that. And it would have been more worth <laughs> But even well, if you're gonna be in physics, it. even if you're gonna be in physics. You sure, still I know. Yes. You I have know. But my point is we force these courses that really don't have a relevance. I know. Most people, not everybody. Right. For people that aren't going to go into those fields. Right. And I, yeah. obviously, right, I was never going to go into a field that needed that. Right. So but even really if well. you're going to be a mathematician, even if you're going to be a college yeah. professor, even if you're going to do any of these things, you still have to interview for a job. Yeah. You still have to be mindful of what you post on social media. You yeah. still have to be like aware and to know if you take physics right. in college and you get a PhD in physics and then you decide you want to go work in human resources that's probably going to be a disparity in experience and you're going to have to realize that if you want to start over you got to have a place to start over right from. well like, you got to build that little bridge across the the wiggly bridge across the, bridge. the two mountains yes. and you fall in the hole and you get eaten by the snakes or whatever which is the bad ending that Kimberly referred to earlier. Yeah. We, no, we don't want, I don't want any of my people getting eaten by the snakes. I want no. them to make it. It just, the, the whole thing just blows my mind. But in the same respect, it opens up the, it opens up, you know, the ability for you to start your own business, sure. the sure. need. It does. It does. Yeah. yeah. So yeah. that you can And it's very people. meaningful. Honestly, April, it's very meaningful. I mean, I really, I tell my husband all the time, like, I just love what I do so freaking much. I can't even tell you because yeah. I feel so good when I see somebody getting it, you know, and, and, and realizing like, wow, LinkedIn is a free place that I can advertise myself to move the needle on my job search. Or if I just targeted my resume to what I really wanted, I would take, you know, recruiters would notice me and that put me in the side pile. You know, if I really just t do a little bit of this work and it's, yes, it is a lot. It, it can be a lot of work depending on where yeah. you're starting, Yeah. but it's not as hard as people think it is. You just need guidance. You know, I just say people right. need guidance and they need consistency. You yep. can't do like, I work on my job search once a week for a few hours and then I forget about it for two weeks. And then I go, cause I watched Netflix that whole time. And now I went back to it and it, you know, we can't do that. You need consistent yep. action over it's gotta a period be your, of time. Well, it's I, gotta be your full-time job. Searching for a job has to be your full-time job. It really does. Do, for a lot of people, it's not that it's hard. It's just overwhelming. I think right. when you look at right. the list, if you look at it from like, okay, here's the map or here's, Here's what you need to do. They're like, oh my gosh. But it's just one thing at a time. Just check right. boxes. Break it down. It Break yes. it down. Yes. Yep. Break it down into little steps. Right. And consistent action over time, going through all of these steps, you will make progress. And right. I, I can't, there is no one I have worked with yet who has not made the progress they wanted to make if they committed to the process and they showed up and they did the work 
on a consistent basis. There's nobody who doesn't make progress and, and move towards their goal and get to their goal. And even, even now, even yeah. now. In, yeah. in I love story. it. Well, we are about in an hour. Um, do you, I want people to know how to find you because I know yes. there's so many people out there who could use your help. Plug um, yourself. The internet, they don't have to live in Virginia. <laughs> no, they don't. They go, they can live anywhere. Well, so where I, where I drive people primarily right now is to my free Facebook group, because in that group, I am giving away a lot of, you know, just find it right now. content. Yeah. Smart Chicks Career Club. Um, and I'm giving away, you know, just a lot of me in that group, you know, as far as um, guidance and, you know, there's videos in there and resources and just, it's a really great sisterhood community. You know, I say it's a no boys allowed club um, and a safe space for women to come together. And, you know, and it's what I love about the community is not only are they interacting with me and getting to know me and deciding whether or not they want to work with me, you know, in a, in a safe, non-threatening, non-salesy space, but they're also able to get to know each other and network with each other and support each other, which I really think is very important right now because of how isolated so many people feel. It helps to have and a community. Yeah. So coming together in community is awesome. And then my um, Career Happiness Studio, which is my membership community, you know, is certainly the other thing that I am enrolling people in. Um, and that is just a really great place for people who want to do the work, take it to the next level and, you know, invest in themselves. Um, and as I said, you know, the cost of that is so nominal. You can quit anytime. There's no risk in joining whatsoever. And that is becoming, you know, an, just an, a really great sisterhood community as well. Um, for women to come together and, you know, so, you know, we're doing group coaching for, you know, classes, we're doing, um, you know, all sorts of videos and self, um, self-directed self modules and workbooks and, you know, I'm bringing in guest speakers on topics that I'm not the expert on, uh, you know, like time management and finances and, um, you know, starting a side hustle and, you know, things like that. So really just giving these women a lot of consistent support, but also the knowledge and guidance that they need um, and honestly, the main thing is to gain the confidence. Yeah. The confidence piece is what so many, even extremely accomplished women are lacking yeah. at all ages in order to move the needle forward. So Smart Chicks Career Club is the free group. Career Happiness Studio is the, um, the paid membership. And those are really the things that I am primarily um, driving people towards right now to get the help that they need. Cool. I love that. Um, it has been so wonderful talking to you. I just, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you. Be heard. So, um, April, you want to plug us in case anybody wants to find us? Just in sure. Case you never know. Yeah. Um, th first, thank you. Thank you so much for coming on. Um, it's just, it's, it blows my mind that so many people don't know these things, but I think it's very impactful for people like you to do what you're doing because mm -hmm. for, for me, anytime something happens, I always want to talk to somebody who's been there, done that, right? Mm -hmm. So not only have you been there, done that from the TA side and the HR side, but mm -hmm. you've always, you've also been there and done that with yourself. You've transitioned from a corporate right. career to a, you know, entrepreneurial type situation. So that's awesome. Um, but yeah, thank you so much for coming. It's just it's nice now that we have somebody that we can like channel people to, you know, if they yeah, want like right. further advice, which is super helpful for us because we talk to people all day long who are looking for jobs. Yeah. Yeah. And I know. when I was transition. a recruiter, I recall that, that they all want help that you don't have the time or yeah. ability to give them. I know. And I, that was another thing that inspired me to do this because yeah, I feel yeah. for all those people, but thank you yeah. so much for having me. This was so much fun. Yeah, of course. And um, you guys are doing great things too. And I'm so excited to promote your podcast as well on, in my, uh, my world. So yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah. And if you want to find us, uh, you know, maybe if someone's listening on your behalf, uh, huh? you can find our website at www.biggirlpantspod.com. You can find us on every social media platform. We're not really active on Twitter, but we're very active on Instagram. Um, and then if you want to find the podcast, we're on YouTube and we're also on iTunes, Spotify, Stitcher, Google Play, and I think iHeartRadio soon. It goes back and forth. Sometimes it works. And I know. It's like, it doesn't. I have no, applied, yeah. but we but are accepted, and then we have yeah. to go through the process again. <laughs> so I don't know. We are fully, all of our episodes are on Spotify now. So that's super helpful. Yay. Okay, good. Yeah. Perfect. Yeah. Um, please subscribe to the podcast yes. and give us five stars. Um, we would appreciate it. And if you don't think we deserve it, just give it to us. Okay. Just give it to us. <laughs>
Okay, just give it, just give it. Yeah. <laughs> All right, well, thanks so much, Carol. It's been a wonderful, wonderful hour. Um, can't wait to listen. Yes. Thank you. Thank you, Carol. Okay. Okay. I'm trying to end it. Okay. <laughs>